Yangle. I'm, I mean Yangle, but also just Yangle. Hello, nerds, and welcome to a YouTube exclusive edited Let's Play. As soon as he was released, Yangle quickly became a crowd favorite. Not only was his ability to get science, culture, and gold passively after getting to 10 population, but his leisure ability gives him the opportunity to make more food, gold, or faith at will. Given that this ability is available from the start of the game, many players quickly found that you can immediately work Leisure of Faith to earn a super fast Pantheon to guarantee religious settlements. Often seen as the best Pantheon in the game, giving you a second city incredibly early. But what if I told you there's a better way to play as Young Lei? Stick around because this game we have not two, but three cities settled by turn 25. Hello nerds! Today we're going to be playing as a Yongle of the Chinese Empire. Yongle of course gets the Lixia ability, where all cities receive products that convert 50% of their production into food, faith, or 100% if it's gold. These products are really important because at any point, whenever you want, you can start earning faith, you can start earning food, you can start earning gold. You don't need me working on district city projects like commercial hub investments or campus research grants or holy site prayers, which only give you 15% of your production converted into faith or science or 30% if it's gold. So you'll notice the Legion product itself gives you over three times the amount of yields as a normal city product does. The second part of the ability is Dynastic Cycle, where Eureka's inspirations provide 50% of civics and technologies instead of 40%, so you get a little bit of extra, so you want to hit all of the tech boosts and civic boosts that you can. And whenever you complete a wonder, you get a random Eureka and inspiration from the era of that wonder, if available. So this is going to be a build a few wonders here and there. It's not going to be a total wonder spam, but there's a few key wonders we're going to want to try to build throughout the game. We also have the Crouching Tiger, which is a interesting defensive range unit. I say defensive because they only have a range of one but they are incredibly powerful. So they're really good for sticking in your city center or on your great walls to defend from invasions. And then of course the great wall tile improvement itself gives you two gold and extra combat defense, but you get bonus gold when you build them adjacent to other segments. So two becomes four and four becomes six. Additional culture and tourism as you advance to the technology tree for adjacent segments at the edge of your empire and can only be pillaged by natural disasters. Key things to note that the great walls actually gain culture when you get to castles. So we're gonna to try to get castles as soon as possible and then they'll be providing tourism when we get to flight. Essentially because of the Great Wall and their wonder synergy, generally is played best as going for a culture victory because you can spam these Great Walls and get an absurd amount of tourism throughout your empire. And then Yangle especially is focused on getting really big cities. We're gonna try to build a tall game today. Tall being actually more like six, four to six cities, I would say, just because that synergizes really well with audience chamber where you can get additional amenities and a housing from cities with your governors, as opposed to the ancestral hall where you get a lot of settler production and free builders when you settle cities. In terms of our first settlement, I'm gonna go ahead and move our warrior just so we can see a little bit more information. But our best tiles here are these deer tiles, these two food, two production tiles, as well as this stone. So I'm going to want to be able to settle in a place where I can work as many of these. And if I can settle turn one, I definitely want to because it's going to help us out a lot in terms of getting the Pantheon that we want. Now, if I settle here on the bonus resource, the maze, the maze actually stays. So we're going to go ahead and settle turn one right here. That gives an additional two gold per turn in the city center. And then we can actually work our food and production here. Two, two, two tiles for the deer. Now this is where a lot of people will go ahead and straight work Legia Faith to get an early Pantheon because they want to grab religious settlements. However, I would say this isn't really that great of an option. Yes, you can get a really, really early settler, but if we are making only five production per turn, that means we're making 2.5 faith per turn. Uh, to get to 25 faith, that's 10 turns. That's essentially spending 10 turns of your production early game in order to build a free settler. That doesn't sound free, does it? No, a free settler is free because you don't build it. If you spend 10 turns on a project to get a free settler, congrats, you just build a settler in 10 turns. Now, what we can do instead is that I'm gonna go ahead and work the food pantheon this will actually help us grow to two population incredibly quickly 
and then we can actually just build our first settler. I'm gonna go ahead and work anvil husbandry here so I can find good places to settle. And my warrior needs to go ahead and scout around us to see the best locations for us to settle. We're gonna step up this way. All right, yep. You, so you can see we're actually growing here in three turns instead of the eight, that's fantastic. I'll step up this way or going in a circle around. It looks like there's a two food, two production tile. This is what we're looking for in terms of new settlements, but I also see tundra up here. So I think we'll we'll save settling up here for later on. Or you see, oh, here's a scout. I'm actually gonna step to try to scare him away from us. Getting barb rated very early is not what we want to do today. And there's actually a good cut here, nice. And then next turn, I need Rammer to switch off of the food project. He's running away. I'm gonna go ahead, come up here to get that. We need to switch off food and go for our settler. You can see 80 production. This is essentially the 10 turns you would have saved from the Pantheon, but then you would lose on the Pantheon. So uh, let's let's try this out. We'll get our, get our settler here in 10 turns and then we'll find a place to settle. Probably this direction, since this way is looking kind of eh. I'm gonna step here for our goody cat. That's a bronze working boost. That's really nice. And I don't like where this scout is. We're actually gonna hit him just to get him out of the way make him run away from us. And let's go ahead and look over here for a settlement location. I need to know where the settler is going. All right, there's horses. So we do have horses nearby. That's always good to know. There's some nice resources over here. I'm gonna go for pottery so that we can get up to our currency. Temple of Artemis is definitely part of their plan since we have all of these camps and we're gonna want all of that food and amenities and housing. But first of all, oh yeah, right here. This is a really good settlement location because we have three food, two production, a two, two tile and a three, one tile all in the first ring as well as wheat. This is a really good settle and it can grow to another two, two. Yeah, that's a really good settle. It's a little bit far away, so it's a little bit of a walk. However, I think considering that we want to grow our cities to really high population, you're going to want your cities far away anyway. And what? Six tiles from our capital. So I think it's OK. We're going to step here. I want to go try to get a city in this location, probably. So let's step down here. There's lots of woods, lots of appeal. Oh boy, we might be able to do preserves this game. Young Lay works really well for the preserves, but it often depends quite a lot. Oh yeah, there's lots of production here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work foreign trade. I generally like to go here because foreign trade is generally pretty easy to, to, to boost. Compared to Craftsman, I usually get my builders a little bit later and I wanna beeline up here to early empire so I can get my governor titled nice and early. We're gonna run discipline because we don't have scouts and God King will help us get our pantheon a little bit faster. I'm gonna step up on this hill so I can see more. And yes, okay. So we have high appeal here. We have a ring of woods. That means a preserve in this spot right here could work out really well for us. Removing the marsh makes this breathtaking and then up to plus five with a preserve uh, and plus six on these tiles. And then we should be able to increase the appeal of these tiles in a little bit of work. But I think settling either here or here are gonna be good spots because of the two food, two production tiles. So we'll see whatever we can settle. Right, I'm gonna send this settler out here to try to get our high production and tiles worked. Now at this point, we're gonna switch to Leisure of Faith so we can go ahead and uh, get our Pantheon nice and quick, but you'll notice our production's a little bit higher here. And then our second city will also be working Leisure of Faith, which means we can actually get our Pantheon very, very quickly. I thought clay. So we'll be able to settle that next turn. There's a good get down here. And we're gonna go up to writing because we're gonna go straight to currency. And then we'll settle here. You're instantly working a three food, two production tile. You're gonna go for Leisure of Faith. You're getting 2.7 because uh, 2.7 production, it should be three, but we are losing out on a many. So I need to get this wine improved as soon as we can. But you'll see here next turn that we're actually making quite a bit. Oh, there's an irrigation boost. That's kind of eh, because I could have boosted that myself pretty easily. I would have rather had gold or something. But you can see we're already making about six faith per turn between our two cities, which means we should be able to get another city here very, very quickly. There's a foreign trade boost. Oh, that's really nice. Uh, I think a settlement down here would be incredible. So I think we want to set it here. And then that means we can get a city right there. So we're at 24. It looks like we're going to need one more turn. There we are. Here's our Pantheon. Religious Settlements is still here. Hey, Editor Nerdy here. The thing about Religious Settlements is that it actually gets better after you build your first settler. You'll notice that Religious Settlements gives you free settlers. However, this free settler does actually scale the cost of your next settler. 
The first settler you build is 80 production. Every time you build a settler, this goes up by 30 production. So your next settler will be 110, and then 140, and so on and so forth. This works just the same way as Ancestral Hall, where every time you settle a city, you get a free builder. However, the cost of your next builder still goes up. So whenever you take religious settlements for your first settler, you are essentially getting 80 production worth from this pantheon. However, if you take religious settlements for your second settler, you essentially get 110 production from this pantheon. And with the way that this works with Yang Lei and his Leisha abilities, it means you can guarantee getting religious settlements for your second settler quite often. So generally speaking, around turn 20, religious settlements does have to go. So at this point in the game, you will either still see religious settlements or it would have just gone. If it's gone, you can still pick up another pantheon. River Goddess is really, really good. Uh, Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. Goddess of the Hunt would be fantastic on this game. Um, but to, just to illustrate our point, we're going to take Religious Settlements anyway. And then we have our free Settler who is ready to move this turn. There we are. And there's actually diamonds here too. Oh, this is fantastic. Yes! So at this point in the game, we can actually switch off of Leisure Faith. We don't mean making Faith right now. I'm going to go ahead and get our Scout so that we can go ahead and explore, get Era Score, find City States. And then this city is going to work on a Builder. Hopefully, it can buy a Builder here too soon. And then we'll get our Monuments online. But you can see here, turn 24, we're almost there. Turn 25, boom, we have three cities settled. All of them are good cities. This one's going to have a bunch of tiles to work. This has a bunch of tiles to work. This is going to be great. It's going to have a preserve. And we are way ahead of the curve in terms of getting our resources online. Generally speaking, I try to have three cities by turn 50 on Deity. It is turn 25 and we haven't met any city states and we definitely don't have a lot of goody cats, but we're here. We can actually just start doing that now with three cities and then we can continue to settle even more. You can see the settlers go up about 30 production every time you build one, but we should be able to get all of those resources really, really soon. There's also, oh, geothermal vents down here. Okay. All right. So we're going to get a campus in this location. I'm going to want to settle down here, probably right here, probably right there. And this city's going to and I'll go ahead and work on our monument because I'm going to buy it a builder probably. Oh yeah, it's a really good sell. Next to a volcano too. So now we need to try to get a golden age. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit tough. We have our pantheon already. We'll plug in urban planning. So this is our very first switch, right? After God King and we already have three cities. So urban planning is really good for us. I'm also going to plug in survey to get that promotion on my scout. I'm going to go for early empire. Three cities means early empire boost is going to happen at any second. Uh, this is actually the same scout. That's hilarious. The one we were beating up up here. Gilgamesh! Oh! <laughs> best friend! Where are you, best friend? Oh. Oh, Scythia. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. She's a little bit close. But Gilgamesh, best friend. Send friendship. Well, actually, I would love this uh, amenity. Thank you. And let's go. Yeah, Gilgamesh is to our west. Um, I don't need to kill this scout. I'm actually going to take a turn to heal. I want him to get out of here. Let me grab our builder. And that's our writing boost as well. That's really good, guys. So I'm not going to worry about campuses very much in the early game because what I'm trying to do instead is get growth. As soon as we get to 10 pop, then we will very, very much be able to get as much food and science, as, or science and culture and gold as we need. Gilgal Mesh will remember this. Yes. All right. That's step all right there's some barbs here i need to take care of all right there are barbs to deal with now oh my god that was a flood did i lose a population no population loss and nine tiles gained fertility that's amazing uh i need my scout out of here i don't want my scout to die already all right we have irrigation i'm gonna go for writing I do need to take care of these barbs, so um, if I can get to the Agoge card, then I can actually spam out some uh, archers soon, or slingers, really. But I would love to settle, what, six cities? One, two, three, four, five? This one's a little bit far away. There's a barb clan here, too. What I could do is I could settle here. It's a little bit more, a little bit easier to defend from Scythia, who's, like, right there. And I'm going to be going for commercial hubs first anyway. 
a commercial hub here and a campus here. That's still a really good campus, but we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. I'd love to have my cities around a Coliseum. So for instance, right here would hit a bunch of cities if I had a Coliseum right in the middle of our empire, which means putting a entertainment complex here. And then we can actually get some really powerful theater squares, as well as I do want to get our government plaza here so I can get some really nice commercial hubs in this area between our cities. That looks like a really good core. Commercial hubs into preserves um, if I can, or theater squares if I can't. Seems like a good plan to me. Writing. Tarugas here. All right, we met three city states. Nas when did we meet Nazca? Also first meet, nice. Also, hello? All right, um, actually I did want to buy that builder. I just saw this. So instead I'm gonna buy a scout and send my scout down here to pick that up. And then I need to go down to currency. Let me hit this guy. Taruga's gonna be really nice for a percentage modifier on our science. Preslav, not so much. And the Nazca is kind of eh. So Taruga's gonna be our, our main concern, I think. So I think that they have a money there. Um, I need to actually get out of here. And here's our builder, finally. Gilgamesh sends us free money. Hello, thank you. And then here's our builder. I'm gonna turn off this builder lens. I don't like it. And I would love to get the luxury online as well as some of these i would also love to unlock the temple of artemis soon but that will do that right after our districts which means i need to get a trader next and let's get our monuments up this guy stepped across the river which is great i should have attacked i should have done that first instead of attack, attacking across the river let's attack i think he should live uh, yeah he ran away let's get our camps online let's get our amenities fixed so that helps like, it is basically a 10% produc production boost in those two cities. There's more mountain here. More floods. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he stepped back. So, I'm going to kill that. Get a promotion. I I don't know what these... Oh, this... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a problem. We have... Okay, we just got craftsmanship boosted just in time. And we're going to have to go here and get some military out. Uh, these mountains are actually, oh. You know, this is really nice for defense, but that's really a pain. Get a promotion there. There's the Ottomans. Inter Where is Gilgamesh? I'm gonna improve this camp instead of this because that could just flood and, and uh, hurt anyway. But over here, we'll improve that. It was luxury. It was All right, getting disciplined now. And it looks like we're gonna hit a dark age. I'm actually totally okay with a dark age. And then what I wanted to do is actually run our internal trade routes. So we're gonna grab Magnus in the center and we're gonna send this trade route to Beijing. I'll show you exactly as soon as we get a, another governor title as to why the scout needs to run away. You need to come back here. And I'm going to need some units now. So let me get a slinger so I can boost archery and then into a warrior. And this city will also be getting a warrior after this monument. Uh, barbarian horses are a problem. I am on a hill, so I'm just gonna fortify here and let them attack into me, and then I'll heal. Um, let's trade this direction to get the city growing and get our first road and a boost of currency. So this is the problem with going for this strat is that you will most certainly go for a dark age because you have some really late scouting, but we will try to go from a dark age into heroic age. I can also try to buy a quick amenity from Scythia for 36 gold. That gives me a 10% boost in my capital to my yields, which is fantastic. Oh, they're gonna bar. Oh, they just do a lot of horses. All right. I would like to run home, please. All right, let's get our slinger up. We can get another slinger. And in the early game, you generally like to, I like to get three slingers and two warriors because slingers can be promoted into archers, which will then give three archers for the machinery boost. But I need to deal with this bar problem now. Ooh, actually, Preslav is gonna help us out a little bit, looks like. I'm gonna step our slinger, and it's time to go for state workforce, because we're about to unlock currency. I'm actually gonna play in a go aid so that we can get our units out, and then we're gonna go back for discipline. But that'll help us get these units out very, very quickly. Oh, geez, Scythia. Money. Money. All right, we'll get our units out. And then I need to get these commercial hubs down. I never got this worker to chop this tile. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna move this commercial hub and then put the commercial hub right there. I don't wanna spend the money, but it's better to do this. 
And then it's going to be really hard to buy out to this tile. But I'll buy this and I'll buy that the next turn. I don't like spending this much money, but it is what it is. We'll attack here. I have another slinger. Send them back. Oh, there's barbs. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, no. And we'll get one more warrior. And then we should be good in terms of... Actually, no, it's a slinger. Then we should be good for early military. Oh, shoot. Where'd you come from? All right, I need to hit that warrior. The air is about to end, and then we're getting our districts online. So I need a little bit more gold. I'm going to sell these horses. There we go. Let's lock down another commercial hub. And then soon I'm going to want to get more settlers out, settles out. The Ottomans want to be friends. I would love to be friends with the Ottomans so that I can... Uh... Uh, this is bad. Oh, no. <laughs> What the hell? All right, boost the archery just in time. Uh, I need to. I need to get these archers. Uh, hello. <laughs> All right. This is a problem. <laughs> this was not part of the plan. Uh, we're about to boost state workforce. So we're gonna work this for one more turn, and then we'll switch off to military tradition, so I can help my. Uh, oh no, my dying army. <laughs> Let's go to military tradition. I need to get the support bonuses. Let's kill these barbs. Jeez, I need to get discipline into ASAP. Holy cow! Where, where is that? Where's that <laughs> meteor I needed? <laughs> All right, so I know, I know this looks bad, <laughs> but don't worry. We still have one, two, will be three archers, which actually we can upgrade our slingers next turn, and we have two warriors that should be enough to help deal with the rest of this. It is about turn fifty. So this is normally when you have three cities and I did a little bit of pinning here. We want to get another three cities settled. All of these will be in range of a Coliseum. That's our core six cities. Maybe we get a seventh and we put a governor in every city. One, two, three, four. You have seven governors here. So you can actually put Amani in a city for the boost with the audience chamber without even having to worry about putting her in a city state or something like that. But seven cities will probably be the maximum amount of cities that we're settling unless we just settle a bunch of cities late in the game for more great walls. We also have a couple of key wonders we're going to want. I have, of course, Colosseum and Temple of Artemis being built in the capital. Magnus will help us be able to chop those if we so choose. Our hanging gardens here. Uh, we could also build a great bath still, so that might be something worth building. Just to prevent this river to, from continuing to flood. And then hanging gardens would also be incredibly, incredibly useful for the extra growth that we'll be getting. We'll have plenty of housing from audience chamber, so so that will be really nice. And this will make some really good theater squares. We also have some good, maybe some potential spots for a couple extra preserves. But it looks like for the most part, the preserves will be on this end of the empire. We're about to hit the next era and we should be a-okay. Oh, they killed my trade route. <laughs> we'll be okay. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. Uh, I do want to promote these guys. I can only upgrade one right now, so let me just trade the rest of my horses. And I should be able to upgrade both of my archers. So I want to stay in the woods and promote here, and then you will also promote here. Next turn, we'll have three archers. We should be able to defend, and then we're going to keep on exploring. We can also plug in a discipline now. And then we're about to boost state workforce, of course, with this commercial hub being built. I'm going to go to a defensive tile there. And there is Jerusalem. All right. I need to find that chariot. When you find yourself. Keep digging. Yeah, true. All right. So you're going to step and we're going to kill both these guys. You're going to defend right here. Then you will also step back and also get a promotion. I'm going to give you garrison. At this point, I'm going to go for horseback riding. Now that archer needs to be defended. So he's gonna go in the city and start shooting up. You can step and shoot him, and there we go. The problem is almost dealt with. We'll finish our commercial hub. Then there's the meteor that I need. That can actually go and clear these, help clear us, clear the camps for us. There's a wonder. And whenever I can, I wanna get another scout to go this way. I just need to know what's around us. Strong economy, uh, very strong. Yes, the strongest. Uh, <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong here. Uh, I do actually want to work on our government plaza. 
and we'll shoot this guy. If we kill this guy, he can't get shot from him. So we're okay here. I'm gonna step and shoot. I will say surplus the logistics. So this will give us two food on our domestic trade routes, but also it'll give you 20% growth in our Magnus city. And then we're gonna keep all of this as is. I will grab military tradition and I'm gonna to wanna to go a couple of settles out before we get to autocracy. At autocracy, we're gonna go ahead and build a bunch of wonders. So let me, do we get a quick settler out? I think we get a quick settler out. Let me ask. Oh, it's a Matterhorn. All right, that's fantastic. Which means I'll get the Alpine promotion for free. So we're gonna take the Ranger promotion and then we'll step there. I don't send a... Take care of this guy, take care of him. This guy can actually get the Tortoise promotion. And then we're about to have this whole problem dealt with. Mercenaries. And then I'm gonna have to pick one of these camps to clear. I'm gonna go for this one. And there's the Alpine promotion. Now we have a super scout and there's another sieve here to me. Fantastic. You both shoot this guy, take care of him. You got promotions. That's fantastic. And it's Sweden. So Sweden should have generally good science. And I'm gonna try to get open borders and delegations sent because it's gonna help us get friendships with every sieve that we can. Speaking of, because we're gonna go for a culture victory, I'm gonna try to be friendly with any, as many sieves as I can be. All right, they trapped my city for some reason. And we got another garrison and then a volley. I'll send my warriors and my chariot up here to clear this guy. And then we'll have this problem almost dealt with. Uh, floods will be a problem at some point. I don't know why he's attacking my city. A couple units here, we should be okay. And I'll send this guy back here to deal with this other barbarian problem. We'll get to masonry so we can get our great walls down. And you wanna to try to place these as soon as you can because they need to be on the edge of your empire. And I need to get my traders back. I would love to buy another luxury, sell some horses. I need to get this trader, it's 200 gold though. All right, we have a government. I'm gonna build a few cities instead of a lot of cities. So I'm gonna go for autocracy. This will actually give us a wonder production boost. It also gives us yields in our government plaza and our diplo quarter. Both those will be in our capital. Our capital will be incredibly strong in this game. We can take out colonization. We'll, we'll plug into urban planning for general production. We'll keep discipline for the barbarians. And then we'll also run the corvée card and charismatic leader because we're about to switch to a couple of wonders. Step up, we'll take this hit. And you're going to heal for another turn. You guys are going up this way. This settler will probably go out here. Heck yeah. As soon as these commercial hubs are built, we're going to go for these wonders. I'm going to go for games and rec because since I'm not building my theater squares early, I'm going to go for commercial hubs into preserves. That way I have a good balance of currencies between gold, faith, as well as food and housing. And then also just culture on top of that. Um, theater squares are going to be my third district. The capital will be building commercial hub, government plaza, and entertainment complex. And eventually I'll get these theater squares down. Yep, we're going to go for masonry to get our great walls. And we met the Aztecs. I don't remember if it's a standard or a small size game, but I'm going to send him a delegation and open borders. Like, I'm going to need to be friends with them. If we go to war with anyone, it's going to be Scythia. But for now, I'm going to try to be friendly with them. Um, I should also get a city down here ASAP. Honestly, this might be the, the settle. The two, two, three tiles. Also another luxury, new continent close by. Aztecs already likes me, that's fantastic. All right, we're gonna come down here. Then we're gonna go hit and hit. Clear the camp, fantastic. That's a good amount of error score. Three because it's within six tiles of one of my own cities. And now I'm gonna go for a Temple of Artemis as well as the Great Bath. So I should probably be on the lookout for builders in this area. Uh, the only problem with chopping is that it's going to ruin my appeal for my preserves. And uh, honestly, I, I, I'm fine with doing less chopping. Ooh, this is the end of the continent. There might actually not be anyone here. Uh, Giggle Mistress Friend is up for renew renewal. I'm going to send him a delegation. When you have delegations to other civs, it actually increases the amount of typical favor that you're earning. Uh, those archers are doing quick work here. Yeah, Great Bath is gone. Never mind. <laughs> what I can do is instead is go for hanging gardens in this city instead of this one. Uh, the reason why I want to wonder here is I want to increase the appeal of this tile. Right, you guys can go ahead and eliminate this guy. Take him out. 
Then you can just go for a market. Uh, Chariot's gonna go here. I'm gonna go ahead and block. I'm gonna keep an eye out for anything around here. Oh, someone's building the Hanging Gardens. That means I'm gonna have to chop for it. Can I sell my Diplo favor? Actually, can I buy up Diplo favor? Ooh, yes. We can buy up Diplo favor from the AIs that don't value it yet and give it to Sweden who does. And get a builder. And then I'll be able to chop this tile to get Hanging Gardens. Ha! Never mind. <laughs> All right, so this is the problem with waiting for wonders, but also it means that you're not going to lose uh, wonders in the early game. If you lose it, like, with like, putting one turn of production into it, it's not that big a deal. And let me get my traders. Yeah, that was built really fast. Holy crap. As long as I get the Temple of Artemis and the uh, Colosseum, I'll be happy. Eat your business. It's... We should be able to deal with that. He's still going. This city... Ooh, campuses are discounted. <gasps> ooh, that's interesting. So if you're unfamiliar, there's a mechanic in the game that wants you to build districts that you haven't built yet. So if the number of districts you have completed, you can see here we have three commercial ups completed, is equal to or greater than the amount of districts you have unlocked. You can see we have campuses, commercial hubs, and the government plaza. So that's three districts unlocked. Uh, three districts equals three districts unlocked, which means we get a discount for a district that we have not yet built. You can see our campuses are only 63 production instead of 107. Because of this, instead of building a commercial hub here, I'm gonna actually get a campus. I'm gonna put it right here on the floodplain tile because there is a nice plus three here and we'll get error score and that will be built incredibly fast. I'm also gonna try to get a builder out of here to improve our tiles first though. That will help us get our heroic age. And then between that and free inquiry next era, we should get a ton of era score. I'm also gonna to switch to my trader here because I wanna get those on online ASAP. And then, yeah, we're gonna get our preserves here soon. Let's get our stone improved. Uh, whoa, 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 we, uh, what, what the, how many did they spawn this turn? Jeez. Let's try to get everyone at least wounded so they can't really hurt me too much. They're still spawning units and they're spawning swords, which is definitely a problem. Fall back. All right, we're gonna go for our entertainment complex next. This city will love to get this preserve here. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna wait because I wanna chop out this marsh. The marsh, the food chops are actually really important for us. So I'd love to get my Dipple League in so that I can get a two envoys for the price of one here. And I would love to send that to Kumasi to give me a little bit of culture. But you can see that actually gave me two envoys. Kumasi actually wants a campus too, which is great because we're gonna build one of those. This warrior is gonna heal this turn. We're gonna step back so we can shoot the sword. And Sweden also wants to be friends. It's going to be a very friendly game, isn't it? Nice. Holy crap, what the heck? Uh, I'm going to chop out this maze here for a little bit of extra gold. Yeah, dude, what the heck? They're still raiding. All right, this is a big problem. All right, the floods are still happening. Uh, that's fine, I guess. Gilgamesh is now buying Diplo Favor. Uh, I would like to buy this preserve tile. Is that a wonder? Why is that a 1-4? Oh my god. Hello? Temple of Artemis is on its way up. I don't like any of this happening here. All right. Oh, Kumasi got taken. That's a, that's annoying. We still have to believe in, so I want to get the science from Turuga. There's a lot of horses down here. All right. I'm going to walk around this way. Sell horses to Gilgamesh. And so my Diplo favor that this gold per turn is going to be incredibly helpful for us. All right, the swordsman's here, so I need to get across the... Oh, this guy's going to die. Well, they have to attack. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. All right, tech-wise, I need to get to construction. I also want to build a water mill. We finally have our trade routes back. So this is what I mean. You get additional two food from the capital. So how domestic trade routes work is that you actually get resources based off of the districts that are in a city. The city center provides you one food and one production. Domestic trade routes give you one food and one production. Our commercial hub is providing a additional one production from a domestic trade route. Uh, most things like campuses and theater squares, they provide food, but there's a specific district that I'm going to try to prioritize getting online 
as soon as possible. That's the government plaza because it gives one food and one production in a city for a domestic trade route. The other district that does that as well is the Diplo Quarter. So that's an additional one food and one production, which means I'm going to want to try to get the Diplo Quarter in the capital as well. So I would love to get this city online. And also it gives me a trade route, which is nice, or a road. And then as soon as I get my commercial hub repaired, I can get my market up and get more food and production. Here's a ton of Artemis coming next turn. Oh! When I saw the house of hey! Artemis the clouds, those are the marvels. We did it. We got it. And I said, lo, apart from Olympus, the sun never looked on aught so grand. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we can take a Charismatic Leader and Corvée because I don't need this for a little bit. Um, I definitely still need Discipline. And I'm going to run Conscription for a little bit of extra gold. So I didn't get this government plaza online immediately. That's going to increase the food and production here by an additional one. So it'll be four food, three production. And now it's time to go up to feudalism. Uh, you need to die. You need to heal. You need to get to the high ground. Uh, these swordsmen are, are really annoying. And at least we have a heavy chariot coming to help. We'll shoot here. Chariot will take the high ground. We'll get this market online. We're going to food shop here. That's going to help this city. Get a, a preserve down. And then I need to get these, the rest of these three cities as soon as I can. And the goal is to get the 10 population as soon as we can here. We need builders. I need to improve tiles that I am working currently. Like this city has a lot of tiles to improve. Also, we need to get our great walls down for air escort at some point. Uh, I will chop the woods here. Finally have that this camp up here taken care of. Hank Wana's in the game. Nice. I love another builder. We're going to chop out this market into the preserve here so that I can go ahead and get another trader here and send that to the capital as well. Our government plaza has been built. That's fantastic. We're going to grab a, a Pingala, put it in this city here. I really do need to buy my granaries. We're going to grab the audience chamber here. We can probably get, put provision on, on Magnus and then just build three settlers finally clear that camp we'll send this warrior out this way because i think something's there all right so now we're getting four food and three production on these trade routes right, i'm gonna send my scouts on auto explore oh immediately runs into barbarians because i don't want to deal with uh, editing around these to be honest friendship with solomon again uh there's barbs here Uh, every pasture we make is another amenity from Temple of Artemis. So I definitely want to prioritize that. Yep, Lysel Fjord is here. Nice. All right, we might get an extra city up here at some point. We're actually getting merchants already, which is really nice. 400 rats for the city get two gold. That's awesome. And I need to get housing. So I'm going to go ahead and build my preserves up because that will help my cities grow. Get another amenity online. And we're just going to have our units stand where we want to put cities at, because I don't want more barbarians to spawn. Classical era ends soon, so I can get four era score. I can definitely do that. Um, all we need to do is put our great wall somewhere. So if I could save it, I will. So we're going to get era score for this campus. That's three. Yeah. Oh, never mind. There's a bunch of barbs over here. Oh, that city state got killed. <gasps> Why? Who was it? I forget already. You can see we are also getting a bunch of roads because of our districts and our trade routes, which are always pretty useful. Now let's get this other trader online. And since this is my Pingala city, I will also be getting a granary. All three of these cities have a trade route to the capital, and I can also get one with the uh, in the capital to another domestic city, which won't be as good, but uh, looks like there's some wars happening here. Uh, you know, as long as it's not me, I'm happy with it. Eight population in the capital. There's a settler. Interesting. I'm gonna stay nearby. That's a horseman unit though. I wanna see if I can snipe that because if I can, that'd be ridiculous. All right, trade with the capital here. Get another luxury online. Let's sell this one. Nine gold. Here's the capital. We have another governor promotion. I'm gonna go ahead and get provision so I can hang on to the population here while we just spam out three more settlers. So we're gonna plug in colonization here. That way we can hold on to the population in these cities just fine. Yep, there it is. <laughs> the settler 
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna end one of those. Then this scout, oh my God, that's such big value. I can send him back here in like four, by like in 14 turns. That's amazing. Oh my God. Mr. Opportunistic here. All right, I would love to get up to, I need my difficult quarter actually. Need that ASAP and my groves. The city now has housing really good and i would love to get a trade route in the capital to another city and this city actually got our campus up nice i'm gonna go for a monument into my commercial hub this is actually a plus three which is really nice because it's between the two districts and we can finally start getting uh pengala promoted actually no we want to try to get as many governors as possible so instead i'm gonna grab reina yes reina is gonna go here with forestry management to boost the forest tiles here so you need to just go up this way uh this city actually you know i should save this trade route for this settler coming out. Oh, and we got a golden age, by the way. Uh, Scythia settled here. That's unfortunate, but I can still settle right here or on the gypsum itself. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna go settle here now and we'll get our groves online because the food and culture and everything we can get out of these is extremely high value. Now I want to get up to machinery, which means I will unlock bronze working. There's that bar plan. All right, and with that are the first two eras and uh, in a nice, strong position at the moment. We have four cities about to be five settled and growing incredibly fast between our internal trade routes. The amount of gold we're about to be, that we're making almost 100 gold per turn, as well as some faith in combinations with Monumentality, Free Inquiry and Pen Brush and Voice. We're going to have about to have an explosive next video, and that's what we're going to save it for. So if you enjoyed it, please subscribe to check out the next video. And if it's already online, I'll have a link to the playlist right here. This is fantastic. This is so much fun, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.